Hey everybody out there on the internet, so welcome again to another edition of Give It A Shot, uh, Spotlight Edition. Today we are focusing on a brand that's been around since the 1950s, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh, this is a collection of episodes from their 1980s television series when they first became Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh, that was a series that I grew up with. Uh, it's kind of funny because the theme song every once in a while from that series still pops up in my head. It just sticks in there. I mean, it was a series that lasted uncharacteristically long uh, for a cartoon series, especially Saturday morning-wise. Uh, they did like eight seasons from 1983 to 1990. So, yeah, it, it, it lasts a long time. And uh, in case you really don't know who Alvin and the Chipmunks are, because they are... They've been around for a while. Uh, I, I had to do a little bit of research on this because I was curious. Because I know they've been around forever, it seems like. Uh, they actually started in 1958 uh, with uh, Dave... Bagasarian, I know I butchered that name. Uh, his stage name is Dave Seville, which if you watch the 1980s series, and I believe they had a series in the 1960s as well, uh, they, Dave was their adopt, the Chipmunks' adoptive uh, father who took care of them. Now a couple things you may not know about Alvin and the Chipmunks, uh, they are a Grammy award winning group. <laughs> I had no clue about that. They've actually won, I believe, five Grammys in terms of uh, best uh, children's song, best uh, engineering, which that's part of how uh, Bagasarian made it work, was he was a musical engineer and he sped up his uh, voice to give the illusion of these chipmunks. So, uh, it was this engineering trick that he had done that created the Chipmunks. And, believe it or not, the Chipmunks have a number one song. It was on the Billboard charts, and it was number one. Go figure. Three imaginary rodents have a number one song. So, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's funny that this group has been around for a while, right? They're not even real, uh, first of all. They're kind of like the first, uh, what's her name, Hitsukuni Miku or whatever her name is. I'm sorry, I'm not hip with the, with, with the, with the weeaboo stuff. Uh, uh, I do know Miko is a big deal because she's like virtual and whatnot. And she's a hologram, you know. So it's kind of weird to see this progression from chipmunks to gorillas to Miku and all those other virtual idols now, to the point now, <laughs> to the point now where we have that shit going on on YouTube, <laughs> which is like what? <laughs> you need virtual YouTubers now? But <laughs> okay, it just seems like a steady decline. But I could also say the same for this. Uh, this is also a steady decline because, like I said, um, <laughs> uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, when I was watching this in the 1980s, I couldn't tell you a single thing that was going on with this series. I just remember the, uh, the theme song. The theme song just stuck in my head because, I mean, they are musicians. Bagasarian knew how to write music. I mean, he won Grammys, for goodness sakes. So, of course, the theme song's pretty riveting. They did, in the 1980s, they were pretty successful. I recall, and if I can find pictures of it, I'm going to post them, uh, of, the, of the stuff, because I know I don't have pictures of myself with them, but I had some Alvin and the Chipmunk toys uh, in the early 1980s, like they had a van slash stage uh, that I remember having. I had a couple of the characters, they were those like wind up ones where you know you, you, you wind them up and they do things. So if I remember correctly, Alvin had a guitar so you would wind him up and he would strum. 
Uh, I can't remember anything else regarding that, but I do remember that I had some Alvin and the Chipmunk toys that my parents thought I, li I would like, and I guess I really didn't. I mean, I like the big van. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I used that for a lot of different things other than Alvin and the Chipmunks, but whatever. But uh, from what I've gathered uh, with this little bitty chipwreck, uh, I guess near the end of the show's life cycle, they were running out of ideas because this is all parody. Um, in fact, there are three episodes on here and I only watched the first one. They have a Dick Tracy episode and they also have a Sherlock Holmes episode. So, yeah, I guess, you know, by the end of season six, Season 7, you're starting to run out of steam creatively, so why not just make parody stuff? And that's what they did here. So I only had the stomach for, I was like, how are they going to butcher up Star Trek? Because I like Star Trek. I'm not the number one fan, but I do enjoy some original series and uh, Next Generation. Everything else beyond that I'm not really into, never really cared. Because I, you know, I had, I watched the original and I watched the next gen, so you know I can still uh, relate to some. So, okay, where do we go from here in terms of this? I, wow, this 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 whole episode that I watched of Chipwreck or Star Wreck. Ch no, Chipwreck. <laughs> Chipwreck was that shitty movie with Jason Lee. <laughs> oh, Jason Lee. I have so many questions. You gave up being a professional skateboarder to be an actor, and you're in Chipwreck. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Sorry. Why would I besmirch Chipwreck with Star Wreck? They're still wrecks, but there you go. One just stings a little less, I guess, because this is mainly forgotten, and I'm pretty sure Jason Lee tries to forget it with all the money he made doing that shitty role. Him and David Cross, but I guess, you know, paycheck's a paycheck. You can't, you know, you want job security, there you go. Any, <laughs> anywho, um, so, the Star Wreck episode, obviously parodies Star Trek. They started off kind of weird uh, with this this notion of they're going to watch a movie. And this is one thing about the series that I've always had issues with. That these three chipmunks are the size of small children. They're not life like real life chipmunks you know real life chipmunks you're lucky to get them like six inches off the ground they're the size of small children and that always even growing up i'm like that's not what a chipmunk is i mean i had chipmunks in my yard all the time i knew how big they were how come these are like so stinking huge but there you go so they're having a sleepover, and you know, this is the 1980s, so somehow they got enough extension cord to get a VCR and a TV hooked up in the backyard to watch Star Wreck. And they start watching the movie. Of course, Alvin is going to be uh, Kirk, and he. He does a Shatner impression. And everybody knows a Shatner impression. It's slow, and deliberate, and it just drains you. Captain's Lock, Stardate 2816.9. We are responding to a call for help. I fucking hate Alvin's impression of Kirk. It's horrible. Dear God, is it horrible. <laughs> and the reason why it's horrible is because an impression of Kirk is 
is animation's wet dream because if you have a slow speaking character that means you don't have to animate as much and you just have time filler that's what this shit was oh my gosh what happened here evaluation mr stuck as you're watching this that there is a lot of you can tell the budget's starting to shrink on this shit and i'm going to get into those uh illustrations soon but carry on with the story because it's just who all right so star trek sort of shit and they're like we they captain's log because you got to do that bit apparently they've they've come across a uh a distress signal about a planet uh and they go to investigate when they get there there's nothing left of the planet just like rocks of course simon would be spock why wouldn't he? Spock deduces, or Spec, Spec deduces that he, uh, that the planet has been destroyed, but it's still kind of there, so it's kind of weird. So they're like, all right, well, let's go down and investigate to see if there's any survivors, anything like that. Uh, and they go down, and they, oh, they gotta bring, they gotta bring down Theodore. So originally I thought they were gonna bring uh, Theodore as Scotty, because Scotty was a huskier guy, uh, and, and here they named him Sloppy, so I'm like, yeah, that, that's gonna be Theodore. No, they made him Bones, uh, and he's the Doctor, which has little to no relevance other than they have a quick shot of him in sick bay taking care of people. Badly, I might add. Kind of like modern healthcare in this country. So, uh, they all decide to go down to investigate, and they're checking things out. And they're like, how long? And they have this sensor thing that can sort of go back in time, or maybe it's just some file footage of what the planet looked like. I don't know. And it looks like Green Hill Zone uh, before Green Hill Zone. So that's kind of wild. So it's like, oh, they went to the Sonic the Hedgehog planet, wherever that is. Which, this planet, shock and awe, is called Alderaan. The planet Alderaan 3. And if you remember your Star Wars, like... I do, Alderaan was Princess Leia's home planet. That got blown up in the original movie. So, all right, we're already aping off of Star Trek. Let's just do some Star Wars stuff too. Brilliant. Jesus Christ, this is creatively bankrupt. Hey, uh, you're three weeks late for your annual physical. Uh, hmm. It looks like you had bronchitis and you're Parody is one thing, but <laughs> any but uh, they're down there and they run into these these alien creatures who they assume are native to the planet and they're like we have to leave this place is very dangerous. Um, oh, because I forgot they found what they believed to be the source of the destruction, which was this giant vacuum cleaner prior to landing on the planet. Sorry, I don't know how that detail escaped me. Couldn't be because this fucking thing was just bland as shit. Regardless, they take the aliens back up to their ship. And they discover that these aliens are either one of two things. They are either massive sufferers of OCD. Or they are the most prejudiced, racist things that live. Because anything that is different, they have to fix. <gasps> that cup is... <gasps> different! Their idea of fixing things is sucking it up into like, either like a dust buster or this giant ship that they have. I mean, and it's everything. Because like one of the things that they discover that the chipmunks have to figure out is how are we going to get these deal with these creatures because they've now discovered that they destroyed this planet okay right off the bat right there i would have them under suspicion and we just i just throw them in jail or like in the brig or something because it's like you've just committed genocide we're going to lock you up and have like a military tribunal or something. like that's what i would do that's what i would no no we're gonna let them have a tour and let them destroy parts of the ship because naturally we gotta stretch this shit out to 22 minutes. 
Because, you know, logic and shit. That's what a chipmunk would fucking do. So, uh, they're trying to figure out, like, how to, how to handle this. The other thing is, they, because they don't want to appear different, the chipmunks dress up in the same outfits as the aliens, and because they don't want to appear as different. Okay, so... I know that you can easily just, you know, talk about this shit uh, and break it down, even using common sense, like, because of our designations, these are why we have these uniforms. They're uniforms, for God's sakes, okay? Blue is scientific and medical, I believe, in the original series. Uh, gold is command, because I know that's what Kirk wore. Uh, red is communication, or you're just dead meat, <laughs> as far as I could tell. Um, you can explain that shit that way. That should be enough. Why do you all have to dress the fucking same? And this is another thing about the hypocrisy of this shit, that... There, there's a joke where the parents, like, these are our 2.4 children. I'm Mother Unit, this is Father Unit, and these are our 2.4 children. That's the shit right there that should already, like, kick everything out. Like, just note that you're, you know, you're hypocrites. Because here are these aliens destroying all of this shit on your ship because it's different. And then you steal Theodore, you kidnap Theodore and leave to go back to your home world, which they track. How have you not punished your point, point four child? They go through this whole elaborate thing where Alvin goes down to their house and tries to rescue Theodore and they're like, we, we punish all things that are different. Well then how in the fuck do you even exist? If you are this anally retentive. Because the other thing is that, you know, they, they captured Alvin at this point. They hold him down with a, a laser beam of some sort. And they send the, the vacuum cleaner to go take care of what their enterprise is, which is called the Booby Prize, which. That's appropriate. It's a very appropriate name. And this whole thing feels like a Booby Prize. So, that's going up. Alvin's having a shit fit because, God forbid, someone destroy his ship or do anything to his ship. And they go through this whole ruse where they make the alien children dress different. Uh, the beds aren't made, so that's different. And then there's a giant hole in the yard, which they, they, they sent a photon torpedo down to blow up a hole in the front yard, which I don't know, I think I'd have heard, but what have you. And then it goes through this whole explanation of just because you're different doesn't make you bad, it makes you special. Life forms is our ability to enjoy our diversities without judging them. <laughs> It is so fucking contrived. It is so fucking contrived. And this is where the hypocrisy that I alluded to here a minute ago comes in, right? You have 2.4 children. These are our 2.4 children. 2.4 children. These are our 2.4 children. So the point four child is just a walking pair of pants with what appears to be two strands of hair coming out. If you're also hell-bent on being the same, why have you not eliminated this child? Because it is not like you. Additionally, why haven't you eliminated each other? You're all not the same height. The mother wears a bow in her hair to, you know, denote a different gender. She's not the father unit, and he's not the mother unit. Why haven't you killed each other? This shit makes no fucking sense that you have this much OCD or you this prejudice that you gotta have everything goddamn the same and you don't even fucking fix your own shit. Seriously, that's like the, the whole thing about, you know, you'll pick so you'll pry apart someone's like little speck in their fucking deal, but yet you ignore all the shit that you've got. That would be like me, like, okay, personal thing here. I'm not a big fan of 
you know, making, like, having the nicest shit. I, d I just don't. Like, I I'm content with what I have. I don't need to show off anything. I mean, obviously, I'm using a clipper, the big red dog blanket, to cover a old military mobile table. All right, that's what this shit is. Okay, like, I don't care. If it, if it functions, I'm cool. I'm a product of my father. That's just how it is, right? But one thing that he put in me that I'll never get out is having a decent yard. Like, it just has to be cut. It doesn't have to be, like, finely fucking tuned in, like, every shade. You know, every blade of grass looks the fucking same, and there's no bald spots or some shit like that. It just has to look fucking fine, right? That would, like, this whole thing would be, like, me, uh... Picking apart my neighbor's yards, because most of those fuckers don't know how to mow a goddamn yard, and they all fucking, uh, <laughs> this is getting into some weird territory, and it probably says a lot about me. They all ride fucking riding mowers, and their fucking yards are awful. I push my goddamn yard, and it comes out decent. It does not look like garbage. Like, I don't get it. But that would be like what it is, right? So, like, I'm even doing this shit. But, the hypocrisy! Holy shit! This, this story just fucking sucked! <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, whew. story is contrived. It, it just felt forced. Like, the whole, like I said, the whole differences thing is just way too much. The... The other thing is, I can tell this is... I had to look it up because they didn't... Ha they, they put the credits at the very end of the DVD. Like, they're not at the end of each episode. Which is nice, but also kind of troubling because I want to know when this thing was. So, apparently this came out in 88. And the series ended in 1990. So, like I said, they're, they're a bit creatively bankrupt. And they're using a lot of parody shit now because, you know, what the hell else can you do with chipmunks? So, you can tell that... Ruby Spears started getting a little bit cheap with the animation. Uh, like, uh, not everything. Like, when they do this Chipmunks at the movies thing, like, they, they put, you know, as a, as your intro anima animation, your theme animation, you usually want that to look the best. Because that's the one that's going to be there every episode. And so, you put a little bit more into it. So, yeah, there's some stuff in it. But here, I already started noticing... There were a couple of animation spots where I could obviously tell that the budget was shrinking. Uh, for instance, they recycled a couple of shots throughout uh, when one of the Chipettes, who was supposed to be Ahura, Ahura? Ahura, I can never say her name right. Um, she gets blasted into, uh, into Alvin's lap twice uh, and they run a similar joke each time there's also another segment where you can see the garbage area of when Simon slash spec comes on the screen uh, of like what that was you know like that comes up there's also parts where you don't see, like when they're working on things that knobs are not moving it's it's definitely at this point in the series run where care is kind of um, the attention to details gone like usually usually what will happen is if you get a if you get a rather successful show that's animated you will have like the first season will be kind of rough because you know people are trying to work with the budget that they have and then as the budget grows you, you notice the up the 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 upward scale of, of quality and then uh, say they start shrinking the budget again, or what, or maybe people just start getting careless. You can start to see the the mistakes more clearly, and yeah, this this was riddled with it, and it's 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 kind of it's kind of sad um, because I mean, when I was a little kid, yeah, I liked Alvin and the Chipmunks. I don't really know why I did though. I don't want to say that Alvin was cool or anything because. He was an asshole. Calvin's up or Calvin. Wrong one. Alvin's always kind of been an asshole. The entire time. 
like Simon I respected because he's just like, yes, this is the thing. Theodore was always shitty. I mean, could you write a bigger dork who just likes to eat? And then they did the same thing with the Chipettes, which thankfully, I think, what's the lead Chipette? Brittany? Yeah, she's not in this, so thank you. Because I was never a fan of her because she's just too vain. But in lieu of that, it is not uh, the CG stuff, thankfully, because all of that is utter garbage, other than the fact that uh, in one of the movies they made a reference to uh, uh, Pink Flamingo, which is like a fucking X-rated film, go figure, and it's a reference to eating dog shit, <laughs> so go figure. Uh, and then I know they have a, a, a more recent one, I think it came out in 2015. Alvin in the Chipmunks with like three ends or something like that because that's really what you need and Alvin looks fucking horrifying. He's like a mix between uh, a chipmunk and a child which is kind of what they were going with this but it's not nearly as bad other than the fuck that they're like blown up to small child scale. Whew. But even the ending is just like they, they come back to reality so to speak, and they get all anal retentive about, oh, we gotta clean this place up, and then the parents come back. That's another thing, like, the parents just look kind of weird and, like, in, like, a mode of disinterest. So you got that. I don't know, the whole fucking thing's weird. Would I recommend watching this? No? I mean... We got to Gorby. And I'm borderline ready to, you know, drink down Boris. Because this is like... It's taxing. That voice acting with, with, with Alvin as Kirk is fucking taxing. You stay out here while I go around. So... Nah, not a fan. I don't know if I'm a fan of the, these fuckers anymore. Fuck them. I guess. So until next time, party people. Toodles!